Hello, this is Todd Luck, and this is a review of the original Tarzan of the Apes from 1918. This is the silent movie that was the very first Tarzan movie. This is the movie that took Burroughs' novel, which had only come out a few years earlier. The Tarzan novels were actually coming out at the time, and they were a phenomenon, and this put them on the big screen and turned Tarzan into this huge franchise like the world had never seen. They would eventually get comics and television, and, you know, it would go on to have, like, 50 internationally released movies at this point, and it all started with Tarzan of the Apes starring the first big screen Tarzan, Elmo Lincoln. And Elmo Lincoln was the real Tarzan. And we'll be discussing why as we talk about one of the craziest things that's ever happened on a Tarzan movie set and why Elmo Lincoln was Tarzan in real life. For the purposes of this review, we're going to be looking at Tarzan and the Apes on this DVD from Grapevine Video. They've tinted the movie and it looks great for a hundred year old movie and it's very watchable. And they've also included a short film called Thor, Lord of the Jungle. And this is a, another silent movie. Um, I can't really recommend this one. It's about uh, circus hunters going uh, to get a lion in the jungle named Thor. Uh, but mainly it's about uh, this chick named Jean. And it's kind of a melodrama about her and the lion barely appears. Can't really recommend that one. But Tarzan of the Apes is awesome. Now, this is the only film that's ever been called Tarzan of the Apes, probably because it's the only film that's ever directly adapted the book. Now, it does take its liberties with it. It is abridged and summarized. It's only an hour long, but it is a really good adaption, and what's there is mostly very, very close to the novels. And, you know, we've seen other attempts to adapt it, but they've told their own stories. So, for instance, Greystoke did that. Disney's Tarzan did that. And if you like those two movies, um, I highly recommend watching this because it's got a lot of the same scenes in it, but done, you know, in a different era, right? And closer to the context of the novels. I think you'll get a big kick out of it. And overall, it is a really good adaption. It is very strong filmmaking, the text in here is well written and it comes up when you need it to in order to understand the scene. There was never a scene that I didn't know what was going on by the end of it. And sometimes that doesn't happen in a silent film. If you want examples of films that don't do that well, just watch that Thor short film and you'll understand. Right off the bat, the movie lets you know it has a really great grasp of how to use shadows and visual storytelling because it gives you you know, pictures of Tarzan in shadow in various points in his life, including a tribute to the cover of the novel, which is just brilliant. And even with its summarized nature, it still puts in things you've never seen anywhere else. Like, for instance, the story of how Tarzan's parents end up being stranded straight from the novel, including the mutiny on the boat, which is really cool. Gordon Griffith plays young Tarzan, and all of his scenes are just an absolute joy to watch. Again, very summarized, but you get your major plot points in there from the novel, including one that I've never seen on the big screen, and that is him discovering the books in his parents' cabin and discovering what language is, and that being his bridge to what humanity is. However, they do make a major change from the novels by introducing a sailor named Benz, who will find Tarzan shortly after he discovers that book and will be the one who teaches him how to read and write. And Benz also makes it to Europe where he tells people that the son of Lord and Lady Greystoke is still alive in the African jungle. And in the movie, that is going to be why Jane, her father, and William Cecil Clayton go to Africa. They're actually looking for that lost hair to Greystoke. So why did they do that? Why add in a new character like that? And I think probably it was to shore up some plot holes. While Tarzan of the Apes was an amazing work, it was also one of Burroughs' earliest novels, and it did have a few issues. One of them was that Tarzan taught himself how to read and write by looking at books in his parents' cabin, but he had never heard the English language. Thus, he had no context to what any letter sounded like. So he would have had no idea that 
the letters T-A-R-Z-A-N would sound like his name, would sound like Tarzan. So this gives a plausible explanation as to how he may have known that because just like in novels, he does leave them a handwritten note when they come to Africa saying, do not touch Tarzan's stuff. And that explains why he was able to write his own name. In the novels, it's actually complete coincidence that Jane and her party found Tarzan's parents' cabin. And so this changes it to them actually looking for the cabin. And so it ties it into the story and it gives us a plausible reason why Tarzan's cousin is looking for Tarzan. And so let's talk about the cast for the last half of the movie with, of course, the first Tarzan, Elmo Lincoln. Um, now, he is a bit thicker uh, than what we're used to, and he was not the first choice. Uh, the actor that they originally cast got drafted, and so Elmo Lincoln took his place. And the look of the character is a bit off. Uh, it would take a little bit for them to get the costume right and the hair right and all that. But... It is a good portrayal of the character. Um, he does well. The first big screen Jane is played by Enid Markey, and she's cute as all get out. She's a great actress who shows a lot of range, has some chemistry with Tarzan. She has dark hair as opposed to being a blonde in the novels. Um, I'm not sure why this was done, but it could be that blonde hair would come up, you know, kind of washed out and white on a black and white movie and that may be why they gravitate towards people with darker hair. Uh, it would be the first of many, many brunette Janes that we'll see on the screen. Jane's personal servant Esmeralda is actually in the movie and she doesn't do a whole lot other than have uh, historical reactions to stuff, but I guess that's in keeping with the novel. Uh, Burroughs would come up with much more interesting, much more active black protagonists starting with the second novel own. But I will say in the movie, she does have a very interesting scene where she looks like she's about to open up a can of whoop-ass on Clayton in order to thin Jane. And Clayton makes his first big screen appearance, and uh, later versions of this character will reimagine him as a villain. Um, he's not too far from that in this movie. He's abusive towards Jane. He actually starts the conflict with the natives um, accidentally, and... He, he is actually a, a pretty negative force in the movie, even though he's not quite to the point where he's going to twirl that really hideous-looking mustache they gave him. By the way, I don't think Clayton was ever actually mentioned by name in the movie. I think that may be a byproduct of them cutting a lot of the scenes out. Um, there was a two-hour version of this movie, and it had a lot of scenes that developed Clayton and paralleled his upbringing with Tarzan's. So that may be the explanation as to why he isn't actually named in the movie. Another interesting change in this movie is that the natives are not named as the tribe of Mubanka. And the hunter who kills Kala that Tarzan kills in retaliation is not the chieftain's son. It's actually the chief himself. The tribe is actually not shown as being particularly evil. They're not shown as being cruel or vicious or anything like that, like we saw in the novels. Um, there's only one native who does something particularly evil, and even that might be justified. We'll talk about that in a minute. The movie is mostly shot in California and Louisiana, and my impression is most of the jungle stuff was probably in Louisiana. Uh, the natives are actually played by extras from Louisiana. And the animals are actually pretty cool in here. Uh, we actually get to see numerous animals. Uh, Tarzan does get to ride an elephant for the very first time on film, which is awesome. Uh, and there is a fight with a lion, a real life lion, and we'll get to that in a minute. The apes are mostly guys in suits. And unfortunately, the suits just don't hold up very well on close-ups. And if I had the name of Flaw in the movie, that would definitely be one of them. It definitely takes you out of the experience seeing the uh, very unreal looking faces of the apes. The scene where young Tarzan fights a gorilla in front of his parents' cabin is in the movie. It's done pretty well, even though it is a guy in a suit. Um, there is a switch in from the novel when it comes to the scene where an ape kidnaps Jane. Um, it's actually switched out for a native. And this is actually your big climactic fight scene for the movie, and probably the best fight in there. It's very effective. 
Um, I think it was a good call to switch it out to be a native because those ape costumes just weren't holding up very well and that fight scene wouldn't have been half as good with, with a dude in a suit. This is the only scene where the natives actually do something unambiguously evil. However, it could have also been in the retaliation. In the previous scene, Clayton accidentally kills one of the natives who just happened to be walking by and brussled some bushes and Clayton got spooked and just shot into the bushes, killing one of them. And so it very much appears that one of the survivors of that shooting uh, was the one who kidnapped Jane. So it could have very well been in retaliation. So that's kind of interesting. Obviously, that's still not a particularly great way to retaliate. But then again, if he just outright murdered one of Jane's party, would that have been better? And while filmmaking-wise and narratively, it makes a lot of sense for a native to be the kidnapper in that scene, um, unfortunately, it is a product of its time, and the native seems to be way too happy to uh, be kidnapping Jane and menaces her in a way that seems to play up racist tropes about black men raping white women. But again, you got to remember this is a part of history, and it is a product of its time. And believe it or not, this movie is only part one of the adaption. So it ends basically right after Tarzan and Jane had just met, um, which is actually about three-fourths of the way through the novel. I don't know why they decided to not do the whole thing, why they decided that it was necessary to have an entire another movie for that last fourth of the novel, which honestly contains some of the weaker parts in there. Um, but unfortunately, that sequel is lost to history. It's called Romance of Tarzan, and unfortunately, it is a lost film with no surviving copies. So it could be brilliant. It could be awful. I don't know. I can't watch it. And oh yeah, why is Elmo Lincoln the real Tarzan? I'm not saying necessarily the best Tarzan, but the real-life Tarzan. So remember I told you there was a scene where Tarzan fights a lion. So this was... Elmo Lincoln, the actor, and a real lion. So that sounds dangerous because it is. And so what happened, and this is Elmo Lincoln's story, and it's backed up by um, the actress who played Jane and the producer at Edgar Rice Burroughs, is that it was tied up and doped up, and things still got out of hand, and Elmo Lincoln fought it for real, and stabbed it to death on set. And then he stayed in character, put his foot on the lion's corpse, and it made a noise, the dead lion. And it scared Elmo so much that he, like, leaped over the corpse. Um, and so that, friends, is why Elmo Lincoln is Tarzan in real life. He literally fought a lion and stabbed it to death with a knife. And to make the story even crazier, at the premiere, uh, the theater was dressed up like a jungle, and allegedly that lion he killed was stuffed and on display at the movie premiere. And I know we all complain, including myself, that, man, wouldn't it be great if they could have real-life animals in the new Tarzan stuff? Why has it always got to be CG? I mean... The real-life animals can be very, very dangerous to have them on set and scenes like that for both the animal and the human. And, you know, there are stories like that throughout the making of Tarzan movies. You can check out my Son of Tarzan review for another animal scene that just went completely wrong. And that's it for this review. Again, I highly recommend Tarzan and the Apes. Great movie, and we're going to see if that quality continues as I take a look at Ventures of Tarzan, and that's going to be based on the second novel in the series, which is Return of Tarzan. So we're going to get to see the first big screen version of Nikolai Rokoff and Lav Opar. So like and subscribe for more videos, and until next time, beware of lions on set, kids. See ya.